Hi, Tom Lynch here, and welcome to In Focus Fridays. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by Dr. Larry Corey. Larry was the fourth president and director of the Fred Hutch, and he's a noted virologist, someone who spent his entire career looking for ways to be able to treat and solve the HIV crisis, among other viruses that he's looked at. And so, Larry, as a virologist in this time as we face this epidemic, um, this has been a really important week for us in a couple of places. And I really want to explore with you uh, a few of the developments that have happened this week. First, you have a tremendous amount of experience in vaccine development. And many of us are, are hoping and putting a lot of faith into the idea that we might be able to have a vaccine. The New York Times yesterday ran a, a terrific illustration of what the typical time frame for developing a vaccine could be. And, and some of those time frames were measured in, in 10 years. I know you've been working on an HIV vaccine for at least that long, if not longer. Um, and yet we heard yesterday about the fact that we're going to go at warp speed, and we hope to have vaccines at least in clinical trial by the summer. You're deeply involved in this effort globally. Tell us a little bit about where we stand with vaccines and what the timing might be in the best case in your, in your mind. Well, the vaccine world is moving at quite a significant pace. Um, the large companies had moved into the development of COVID-19 vaccines very quickly, and you're starting to see um, the first generation of vaccines um, move forward. You know, we have sort of an, um, a series of sort of unprecedented events here. You know, first of all, you have an epidemic that's, whether you want to say it doubles every two days or three days or six days, it's very different in, than any other infectious disease. We've never had an epidemic go from zero to three million in a three-month time in the history of mankind. So how does biomedical science sort of come up with strategies um, that uh, deal with both treatment and prevention. And um, HIV is really a pretty good model of that. The first thing we did was behavior change, um, sexual behavior change. Now we have, you know, staying at home behavioral change. The second thing we actually had was the beginnings of an antiviral drug um, and using developing a therapy, which really changes people's perception. Whether rem remdesivir does as much as AZT did in HIV, remains yet to be seen, but it is an analogous situation. And also, it's analogous in its site of action and its mechanism of action. Its site of action is with respect to inhibiting the RNA polymerase and chain terminating. Well, that's how acyclovir works, that's how, how AZT worked. Um, it also provides a target that second generation and third generation um, uh, antiviral drugs should occur, you know, I think reasonably um, quickly in the sense that remdesivir has the disadvantage of being IV. It'd be nice to be oral. Um, it certainly has the, the, the beginnings, even its first studies, saying that the earlier you treat it or you, you initiate it, the better the outcome will be. But, but Larry, in the world of drug development, as we know, as you know and I know, quickly is measured in years. It's not measured in weeks or months. We are moving up the clinical trial aspects of things. And um, you're, you're exactly right that we're talking in terms of months, uh, and even with remdesivir, which is a repurposed drug, um, but which had been tested against MERS coronavirus. So it was the one drug that was out there that sort of shows some in vitro activity. And it's nice to know that you have some correlation in some animal model um, now that sort of suggests if it works in this animal model, looks at this in vitro activity, if I have a small molecule that inhibits at a better activity and works in this model, that I may have, you know, efficacy. And, and let's talk a little bit about the rendisivir trial now as a cancer guy. And, you know, I, I made my whole career in lung cancer. Um, we are used to incremental, tiny little benefits as being the first step. And, and I looked at the remdesivir trial, and I, I was very encouraged by the reduction in, in time to recovery um, as being kind of like what we might see with time to progression in a cancer trial. Um, what do you think as a virologist? Am I getting too enthusiastic about it? Uh, what, what do you see? You see a 35% clinical benefit. Was that a 50% antiviral effect, or was that not? So until we sort of see a little bit more, it's really hard for me to, to, to sort of voice an opinion. However, I do think with late start of disease, 
um, that this is, you know, quite an encouraging result just from reading a press release. I think it's really hard to... Well, press release plus Dr. Fauci talking to us from the Oval Office, which, which has got to count for something. <laughs> well, I know Dr. Fauci too well to sort of say that I'm sure there's something there, but, um, you know, the data are the data, and we'll, <laughs> we want to see the data. Well, Dr. Cray, I want to thank you for a great discussion. I also want to thank you and everybody in uh, Julie McElrath's vid division for what you guys have done to lead the response at the Hutch. It's made a huge difference, not just to our, our institute, but to our city, to our region, and, and to the country. And we really appreciate everything you're doing. I think the most important thing I've taken out of this is the importance of the fact that we really need a multi-pronged approach to how we're going to go after this. And that similarities with cancer are not lost on me, that, that the way we approach cancer is early detection, early treatments, a multitude of combinations in the way we approach things. And I think what we're hearing from Dr. Larry Corey is that same kind of thinking is what we're going to need to be doing uh, in the antiviral space as well. Thank you very much.